Hey everyone, today I'm going to be covering multiple short and silly tier lists that really don't need their own whole videos. I do hope you enjoy, and let's get into it. Intros Ranked is a ranking of the opening words or moments when you load up the game, with it being different each chapter, the most famous being, it wasn't programmed to harm the crew, those openings. Terrible intros, no words, is representative of all the opening cutscenes that don't have words at the start, which is most. They're all here. They were fine maybe when we didn't have ones with words, but now, no way. Okay intros. This holiday season. This holiday season is one that's okay. It's sort of fun to hear it a few times, but it gets really annoying in my opinion. I think it's because it's framed as an advertisement. It just makes it sort of irritating to hear over and over. Great intros. It wasn't programmed to harm the crew. It wasn't programmed to harm the crew, is one that got these intros sort of famous to begin with, and made people turn them into memes. This one's great, iconic and a trendsetter, albeit overdone and a little annoying too, but still good for what it is. How many pages have I written? How many pages have I written? There's one I quite like with Alan stressing over how many pages he's written. It actually fits in quite well with horror vibes and is one of the more tonally creepy ones to me. Incredible intros. This one is really great, I think, with us getting to hear Trickster's singing, and having the incredible beat of his song kicking in as we load up the game. Genuinely incredible. There's nothing more powerful than imagination. It's one I like a lot, and partly because it's true. It's a nice way to start the game, I think. A little life lesson from Nicolas Cage himself. Poor misguided wanderers. Poor misguided wanderers. I like a lot. It's just really funny, I think, to load up the game and have Vecna call you poor in a long and drawn out way. Poor. <laughs> Titles ranked. So this is ranking the killer titles, the the names each have. How fitting are they and how good do they sound? Bad names. The Skull Merchant has to start us off here as what feels like one of the most tonally off names of the entire roster. She's called this as a result of her father's manga character that she embodies, but it's mostly not relevant to the design aside the drones. Is she a merchant of skulls? I don't think so. I'm not sure. I don't understand the name really. The Lich is one I don't like mainly because it just sounds sort of lame compared to who Vecna is and his power. It just sounds a bit pathetic for some reason, and I wish he had a slightly cooler title to go along with him. The Trickster is another case of his title referencing his prior life, in this case his stage name of The Trickster. It just doesn't fit him again really though. What tricks does he play? Why has he earned himself this title? I, I don't get it. The Mastermind is another one I'm not a fan of because it just sounds a bit too over the top and emphatic. I guess it works in that way for Wesker, but it just sounds a bit too much and a bit of a mouthful. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm almost like reading this now. I'm reading back the script and I'm thinking this should be higher already because I don't know, the name actually does sort of work specifically for him. Um, but still, the mastermind, it's a its a mouthful. I think it's too much. Eh, names. These are mostly names that just describe the character and I just don't have much to say really, but they're fine. The Trapper, yeah, sure. The Hillbilly just sounds sort of off. I wish he had a different name, maybe something more to do with his tinkering. The Pig, mm-hmm, makes sense. The Clown, yep, that's a clown. The ghost face I reckon should have remained with the leak name, which was the ghost, which I think sounds a lot cooler. The twins are indeed twins. The Cenobite just sounds a bit awkward. I think Pinhead's other name, the Hell Priest, would have gone insanely hard. The Onryo, again, yep, she's an Onryo. The Xenomorph as well, yep, that's a Xenomorph. I do sort of think in this case, the Alien would have been a bit cooler. I'm not sure, what does everyone think about that one? The good names. The Blight I like, although it's literal, as it just has a bit more pizzazz to it. It's more relevant to DBD and its lore too, and it brings with it a greater impact. The Oni is just an Oni but equally it sounds much cooler than most of the other more literal and descriptive names. The Demogorgon is the same deal, sure it just describes the creature, but it has a bit more drama to it, a more engaging and menacing name. The Plague is quite literal too, but equally there's something quite scary about describing the person herself as 
just the plague, like this overwhelming deadly force. The nurse, the doctor, and the knight, I like all of them, despite them just being descriptions, as they're nice contrasting titles of people you should feel you can trust, yet are killers within the realm. It adds that extra bit of fear to their titles, and uncertainty I suppose. The Huntress is a cool one, literal but definitely more descriptive and epic sounding. It also makes her sound like she's currently hunting, or hunting for you, which makes- oh, that's my alarm going off. It also makes her sound like she's currently hunting, or hunting for you, which makes it a bit more menacing too. The spirit is quite literal, but I think it sounds a bit creepier and more disturbing than a lot of the other more literal ones. Spirit has more connotations to it that makes it engaging. The Executioner is one I'm not the biggest fan of, but I do like. It makes him sound imposing and menacing. The Executioner is coming for you. It fits him well, but it does feel weird not having a reference to his head at all. Great Names. The Death Slinger is one that was basically built to be cool and menacing. It relates to his lore too, which is great. A slinger of death. It works really well for the character and is definitely quite imposing. The shape is just a cool one and a nice reference. The shape of evil definitely makes him sound quite terrifying. It's quite unique, but not quite top tier to me despite it definitely having the cool and creepy factor. The Hag works well I think due to how it contrasts with the reality of Lisa. When you think Hag, you think of a witch or an old woman, but Lisa is like a teenager probably in reality, creating this really disturbing contrast between her visuals and title and the reality. The Cannibal is one that's quite literal, but is also one of the most disturbing names. I remember early into the game I found Bubba pretty scary purely on this, and what you can infer from this alone. The Wraith I've always liked as it sounds ghostly and mysterious, and just fits Philip very well with his empty shell look, a ghostly Wraith of his former self. The Legion is quite cool with it relating to their lore, but also making a lot of sense to who the characters are and how they work as a group. Very cool name. The Artist I like because it sounds a bit more unique and unlike any of the other names. It's a name that doesn't feel like it's necessarily trying to be scary, but more just present Carmina. Equally, there's sort of a brutal reality behind her name, with her art coming in the form of violence now. Perfect Names. The Good Guy I think is perfect because of how well it works as a killer title. The Bad Guy being called The Good Guy. It's just pretty funny. I'm easy to please. <laughs> the Singularity is one that just sounds really awesome and mysterious and fits the character very well thematically, and again, it just sounds really cool and sci-fi. The Dredge is just perfect. It's a weird sounding name, and when I look at that thing, I'm like, yeah, that's the Dredge. The Nightmare is maybe a little bit dramatic, but it does sound cool and represents Freddy well. He is a nightmare, a twisted and messed up character. The Nemesis, I again just think sounds cool. Your nemesis for the trials ahead. The Unknown, I like due to its openness and mystery that comes with it. No one even knew what to call it because they can't even define it. That's scary and pretty cool. Crow Perks Ranked. Amazing Crow Perks, Good Crow Perks, Bad Crow Perks. Bad Crow Perks. There aren't any. All Crow Perks are at least good. I will not accept any debate. Good Crow Perks. I'd have to put Spies from the Shadows in here as a decent track perk and cool perk idea in general. Overall though, I do wish it did a bit more and was not eclipsed so much by other perks. Amazing Crow Perks. Languid Touch is next, and a perk which will inflict Exhausted onto survivors who trigger crows. This can be quite effective mid-chase at exhausting them and stopping the use of exhaustion perks. Survivors are almost guaranteed to disturb a crow when running from you, so this perk is pretty solid. Calm Spirit is also really great, with it being highly unique and being the only way to stop screaming. I think as Survivor. It counters a bunch of perks and also Doctor's whole madness mechanic. It's quite cool and unique for that. Survivor Lobby Items Ranked. These are the items the survivors briefly pull out in the lobby. Bad Lobby Items. Gabriel's EMP is a weird one that I've never liked really. I find it weird how he just pulls out this huge EMP and sort of just stares at it. Not a fan. Yuichi's VHS is another one I don't really like. He just pulls out the tape and glances at it. Neither of these items are that interactable so it just looks a bit awkward, I think. Decent lobby items. Jonah's tablet is one I don't like that much, but it's an improvement. The tablet is just blank white and doesn't look like it's working, but Jonah still looks and taps at it. What is bro looking at? Anyway, slightly more interactable, which is cool. Good lobby items. Sable's cup is slightly better
better than some of the others here, and I like how she holds and interacts with it. It seems more special and stylized to her liking too, which is nice. It conveys a bit of character. Hattie's device is a recording device for her podcasts, I believe. It's character fitting and quite cool, but I wish she did a little more with it, aside just wave it around a bit. Amazing lobby items. The troops loot, I believe it is. I think it's a loot. This one's very cool though, with them spinning around and spawning it in. I do wish they used it for a little longer than they do, but it's still a very cool mini animation. Michaela's book is one of the best, and I believe was the first instance of this we saw in game. It's perfect for her character, and I love how she scrolls through and looks up happily whilst doing so. One of the best ones. Ripley's cat Jonesy is not an item technically, but it sort of counts in the same way in this instance, with her spawning it in. It's really cool and very sweet that she gets to have Jonesy chill with her in the realm. Jonesy actually seems to have a lot of freedom, able to even roam around the Nostromo and hide in lockers and stuff too. A suggestion from my Discord was to rank how useful and how much I like each keyboard key used in the game. So keyboard keys for DBD ranked. We have WASD space QR12 shift and control. Terrible keys. The keys you barely ever use and what they do is quite useless. Q is a weird one that doesn't appear very often, used mainly in various secondary actions and event-based things. Q is mostly unused. Hate that key. Yeah. Control I'm also going to put here as what is essentially the crouch button. It's mostly unneeded and can't even be used for killers, I think. Maybe it can. Maybe. I'm not sure. Not that I can think of. Anyway. Decent keys. R is the key to drop items and survivors. It's a little more useful, but for the most part, these things are undesirable in the first place, so just decent. 1 and 2 I'm also going to put here as survivor only buttons. It is fun to use the actions, but they are mostly useless. Finally I'm placing A and D here. Moving side to side is important, but not up there with the kings, W and S. Good keys. S is first up as our walking backwards key, a great key for movement and a key that makes up a lot of killer plays with moonwalking. Space is going to be here too, the button for actions, skill checks, wiggling and a whole lot more. This button is integral and just just one of the greats. Iconic keys. The shift key, despite not really being used on the killer side, is so integral to the survivor side that it deserves to be up here, alongside its iconic counterpart and top spot placement, the W key. Moving forward is really what most of this game is about. For our final ranking today, we'll be doing the highly requested foot ranking, starting out with the bad feet.